Hi, and welcome to this first lecture on JavaScript and jQuery, where you're going to get a quick overview of what JavaScript and jQuery actually are, how they've actually come to life, and how you can use them to create better websites for yourself or your clients. So first of all, as you may already know, JavaScript is a programming language for the web. So it allows you to create dynamic web pages. So for example, when you see animations on a website, that's usually JavaScript. It may also be CSS, but often it's JavaScript. And also when you see pages changing their content without actually reloading, that's also JavaScript. And of course, you're going to learn how to do all that in this course. So let me give you a quick run through of how HTML, CSS and JavaScript work together and what each of those languages is for. So let me quickly hop over to the base project that you're also going to get in a few minutes. But I made some slight changes. So at the moment you can see there's only HTML used. So HTML lets you define the structure and the elements of your actual page. You can define your headlines here, like the first headline. You can define second headlines, third headlines, and so on. You can add paragraphs, links, forms, and all elements that can actually make up your site. But as you can see, just plain HTML doesn't look too good, and it's especially not dynamic. So let me quickly hop over to my editor right now to actually enable CSS on this site as well. So once we add in CSS and hop back into our browser, you can see that we now have the same page with the same elements, except that the form is hidden, but it looks much better. So with CSS, we can define all the designs and we can make our site look beautiful, but it's still not dynamic. So that's where JavaScript or jQuery then come in. As soon as we want to handle user input, or we want to have custom animations, or we want to have form validation before actually sending our form data to the server, those are all things that we can handle using JavaScript. So let's now go ahead and also add JavaScript into the mix here. And don't worry too much about the code. We're gonna go through this one by one. We're gonna also install an editor for you. I personally will be using Sublime Text, the editor you can see here, and I'm gonna guide you through the installation process. But if you already have an editor that you're familiar with and that you like, you can just use that as well. So let me save this so that now our JavaScript is included as well. And now when we go back, we can see that once I refresh this, you can see that we can have elements disappearing. Let me do that again so you can watch. You can have elements fading out or any other kinds of animations. We're gonna go through each of them in the next section. Or you can also handle user input like when I click this link it's not actually going to take me somewhere else, but it's going to show the form that you've seen previously so that I can register for some kind of uh, event or something like that. And also I can make that slide up again to disappear when I click again. And those are all kinds of things that you can achieve really easily using jQuery. All right, so one more thing I want to say about HTML versus CSS versus JavaScript is that HTML and CSS are not programming languages. HTML is a markup language that lets you define the structure of your site and all the elements inside it. Then CSS you could call a style sheet language that lets you define the designs for all your elements on the page. And then JavaScript really is a programming language where you have all the constructs that make up a normal programming language. Meaning that you can have variables, functions, objects and all that kind of stuff. And also I want to just note that JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. Those are two completely different programming languages. And the only thing they have in common is the Java part of the name. So some people are confused about JavaScript and Java because of the names, but just know that JavaScript and Java are two completely different languages. What those two do have in common is that both have existed for over 20 years now. So they're rather old programming languages and they've already become very popular. They're very widely used by developers and experts around the world. And for JavaScript, over the time, many, many frameworks have been created. So let me just hop back over to the jQuery page again, because jQuery is actually the most popular framework of those. It's a free and open source framework, so you're completely free to use jQuery on any commercial sites as you like, without paying anything for it. And also you can see just how popular it is 
because two thirds of all the, I think, one million most visited websites use jQuery. So you can imagine how extremely popular jQuery is. So by deciding to learn jQuery, you've made a really, really good decision. jQuery is used so widely that you're most probably gonna be able to use it in your career. So it's a really great thing to learn and I think you've made a great decision taking this course. Now I wanna quickly introduce you to this man called John Riesig. And the reason I wanna introduce you to him is that he is the creator of jQuery, which you can see here. And who would have thought he's also a JavaScript programmer. So we owe it to him that we're able to use this great framework to create our dynamic web pages. And also you can see that, well, what it takes to get 225,000 followers, just create the most popular JavaScript framework in the world. And there you go. All right, so just so you know who's behind jQuery, but today there's a whole jQuery foundation behind it because jQuery is so huge today that you can't just handle this all by yourself, of course. Now let me quickly guide you through some of the things you can do with jQuery. So first of all, we're gonna learn how to create animations like the ones I've shown you where you can slide down a form or you can make elements fade out and things like that. And then you'll also learn how to manipulate the content of any element on your site. So you can basically change any element you want in any way you want. And to be able to do that, you're also gonna first learn how to actually select any element on the page you want, which is really easy in jQuery because it relies on your existing CSS knowledge for CSS selectors. Then you're also gonna learn how to handle user input. So when the user presses some button or clicks on an element with the mouse or uses the keyboard, you can handle that event in any way you want. Like for example, on the sample page, when the link is clicked, you can make a form appear or disappear to show you just one example of what you can do. Then you're also gonna learn how to actually fetch content from other sites or from so-called APIs. So for example, Flickr, the popular image repository, also offers a Flickr API where you can actually fetch images for a specific tag, for example. And we're gonna do just that. We're gonna fetch images from the Flickr API in this course. And then also you're gonna learn how to validate forms on your site before actually sending them to the server. So on the client side, you're gonna check if let's say the email is a valid email address or if the name has been specified and all that kind of stuff to give really fast feedback to your user. And you've probably seen that before when your form fields turn green or turn red depending on the validity of your input. So those are just some of the things you're gonna learn in this course. I hope you're really excited. And also I wanna tell you that I'm always open to your suggestions and of course also questions in the discussions. Just ask me anytime if you're having trouble following along the course. But also if you think something's missing from this course or if you'd really like to see something covered, you can also tell us in the discussions and we're gonna read that and we're gonna do our best to see if we can add that to the course. So I'm looking forward to the discussions with you. And also please feel free to introduce yourself in the discussions for this video so that other students can see who you are and we all know where other people are coming from and what their background is. And that's, I think, something really nice. And then maybe other students will also be able to help you with your question. All right, so I'm looking forward to this. I hope you are too. And we're going to be jumping into code real soon, so stay tuned for that. And I will see you in the next lecture.